Someone asked this question, I believe it was on the bulletin board, they suggested it as a meeting topic, and they wanted to know various ways of, I, I hate to use, even using the term watching TV on the go, but let's say enjoying TV programs on the go is probably a better way to put it. Because when you think watching TV, we all, often the first thing that comes to mind is watching live TV, watching a broadcast that's going on right now. And yes, there are ways to even do that, but that would be limiting the category if we just talked about live TV. So I'm going to cover some various ways in the next 20 minutes or so, then I'll open it up for questions and we can talk more. So I, uh, I travel for a living and usually alone. And that means that in the evenings or when I'm in a city that I've been in a million times, I'm not going sightseeing. I have time to kill after work, so typically I want to catch up on some television, That's when, or I'm on a plane and I want to catch up on some shows. So the problem is I'm on a time schedule that doesn't fit TV, meaning that's why I don't want to limit it to live. I don't want to watch a live broadcast because I may not want to see what's on right now. I want to see the shows I like that I missed, or shows that I like that came on earlier, or shows that I like that are, you know, I can't say coming on in the future, but come, <laughs> that, that I like. So that brought me to various ways of enjoying TV. Now, I'm going to talk about a few different products and pros and cons to each one. I use a bunch of different ways of doing this. It depends on what I'm doing. And some are offline, meaning I want to enjoy it on a, on a plane, a train, a boat with no internet connection. And some are live. I want to watch it. Um, even something recorded, but I want to watch it right now, streaming. Streaming is a better way to put it. So one of the companies I'm going to point you out to, although I'm not going to really talk too much about their products today, but they've been doing this for a long time. And the company is called Elgato, E-L-G-A-T-O dot com. Elgato has a category about TV. They make a lot of different TV watching products. Um, unfortunately, though, some of their coolest products aren't available in the U.S. yet. For example, they've got this ITV mobile with a lightning connector that's designed to like plug into the side of like an iPad. That, and you can see it's got an antenna that gives you literally a live broadcast. It's like a TV tuner right into your iPad to let you pull down live TV for free. But unfortunately, it's only available in looks like Europe right now. Um, hopefully that will come to the U.S. soon. That's it, right there. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, digital doesn't matter. Um, so that that product is is forthcoming for I'm sure for the U.S. But right now their biggest other product for enjoying TV is their own little Mac. DVR or digital video recorder. So this box basically connects up to your Mac and your TV tuner, cable box, satellite box, whatever, and pulls in shows and records them to your Mac's hard drive so that you can then transfer them to your mobile devices, watch them on your Mac, or stream them. So they've got, uh, what I'm really trying to say here is if you're looking for gadgets or ways to do it, Go look at Elgato. I'm not going to spend any more time talking about their products today, but go check them out. All right, uh, and currently I'm not using any of their products. That's why I'm not going to talk about them today because I don't use their products right now. I'm using other products, but they are worthy of mentioning. So for me, it's really about three products, I'll call it. TiVo which is the actual DVR on my, in my, on my TV at my house. Slingbox, which is a device we'll talk about in a few minutes. That's also a physical box that's plugged into my um, TV setup at home. And then last but not least, just various apps on my iPad. So let's jump in. Let's start actually with TiVo. So TiVo makes, in my, in my opinion, world-class best DVRs. Now, the, the, the unfortunate thing is they, have, they didn't market themselves as best they could in the early days. So just like anything else, when you have 
best of breed product but not great marketing, you have lower quality, lower class products that just kind of take over. And that's what happened in the case of TiVo. So now when you go to set up, uh, or you go to set up a new cable or, or satellite service, and they say, hey, do you want a DVR? It's a checkbox. Yeah, I want a DVR. And it's whatever DVR they give you or rent you. It's by whatever company, and it's basic features, and it works for the most part. But it, it's the same thing as like saying, do you want a computer or do you want a Mac? That's the way I feel about TiVo. It's like there, there are DVRs out there that work fine, just like there are computers out there that work fine. But then there's the Mac experience. So I look at TiVo the same way. There's the TiVo experience, and then there's the regular DVR experience. Now, what do I mean by that? I'll never forget the day where the Comcast installer came over to my house to set up yet one more of my TiVo boxes. And I was phasing out the Comcast generic Motorola DVRs and switching everything over to TiVos. And he says, well, why don't you just use our DVR? Why are you even bothering with this other thing? And I, and I said, well, first of all, and this is mostly true to this day, said, your DVRs don't let me copy shows from one to the other. Your DVRs don't let me copy shows to my computer. Your DVRs don't let me schedule shows remotely. Your DV and it was just, I just went down this laundry list like I was a TiVo salesperson of all the things that their DVR didn't let me do. And then he kind of huffed and walked away. And they, and, and they have to do a system check. They were, back then, they were required to check every DVR that they make in your home, even if nothing's wrong with it. So we're, we're walking past the living room to let him out. He says, oh, I have to check that DVR in your living room, which was still theirs. I said, okay. It was frozen. <laughs> Locked up, like it needed to be unplugged and rebooted. And I said, that's the other reason. Because <laughs> I had nothing but horrible problems with Comcast DVRs in the early days. And they've gotten a lot better since then. So I switched out all my DVRs and ultimately replaced them with TiVos to get all of those features and just have a better experience. Since then, TiVo has come out with newer boxes. So when I started switching everything over, they were on what was called their Series 3, TiVo HD. Then they went to Series 4, which was TiVo Premier, and I have a couple of those. And then they are their newest one, which is the Romeo, or Romeo. I don't have any of those. That's the one you'd get if you bought a TiVo today. And I just don't have a reason to upgrade. In addition to the box itself, the DVR, they also sell other attachments. Now, the Romeo has all of this stuff built in, so you wouldn't need any of these extra boxes to deal with the Romeo. It's got the technology built in of, for the most part. The stream is actually a little, it's like the size of an Apple TV almost, maybe a little taller, that connects up to the older Premiere, which is the one I have, that now lets it stream anything that's on your DVR to your iPad, iPhone, in your home or outside of your home. So I got really interested in that product and I got one. We'll talk about it because uh, there are pros and cons to that. So let's, ta let's start with TiVo. What does TiVo let me do? Like any other DVR, lets me schedule and record shows. Great. When I now want to watch those shows on the go, what are my options? Number one, they do not allow you to watch them on a computer. So it's either watch it on your TV in your home with the box it's connected to, or take it on the go with you and watch it via an iOS device, iPad, iPhone. Correct, with an app. So, for example, if we go to my TV folder here, there's the TiVo app right there at the top center. When I launch it, it will first attempt to connect to the network, meaning it's looking to see if I'm at home or if I'm not at home, 
it will still attempt to connect to my home network. And it's right now it says at the very top, away from home network. So it recognized, hey, he's not at home, but I'm still going to let you do stuff. Or if it couldn't connect to the internet at all, let's say I'm offline, I'm uh, no internet connection, then it would at least allow me to watch what I've already downloaded. Okay, so what it's doing right now is, first and foremost, this app was originally designed simply to be a remote control. Just a nice giant remote control for your TiVo. So I could bring up, and I can't do it here, but I, if I were at home, I'd be able to bring up the remote control and physically fast forward, pick shows, pause, do all that stuff, just like I was holding the regular remote. Okay, that's got a little bit of benefit. The next thing it allowed me to do is have a visual interface to my DVR on a nice, easy-to-read screen like the iPad. So, for example, I can see the shows that are, um, that are recorded already. I can go to the guide, and it will uh, eventually bring up the guide and show me um, what's coming on and let me choose whether or not I want to record it or not. And... Um, let me manage my season passes, which those are shows you tell it to record on a regular basis. And that's pretty much it. So that much of it has been that way since day one when they came out with this app a couple years ago. Now, what the app allows me to do, if we go back to my shows, you'll notice in the middle there, well, as soon as it comes up, in the middle there, there's an on DVR in the very middle, across the bar there, date, AZ, on DVR, right? I can't point to it, but, oh, yes, I can right here. Right here. And there's another category that says on iPad right next to it, right here. So this is the stuff that's physically recorded on my DVR right now at home that it allows me to see. On iPad, oh, <laughs> actually use the finger, is the stuff that's on this device, meaning I've downloaded from my DVR on this, and I don't need an internet connection to watch these because they're on here. What I really, really like about this particular product over all the other ones I'm going to talk about is if we go back to on, DV, oops, on DVR, and I like Saturday Night Live, for example, and I go into that folder, it's going to give me, and let's say I want to look at the last one, which is 412. It's going to give me a choice. At the very top right corner, watch now, means it'll queue it up on my TV and start playing if I'm home. Download. My next favorite option. My favorite option, actually. Means whether I'm home or not, download it onto this device. So if I say download, this oh, it's telling me that one's already on here. Let me go to another one. Let's go to this one. Dun, 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 dun. Waiting for network latency here. Yeah, what size uh, iPad This is a 128 gig. How big is it now to show? I'm about to show you. Swipe it and delete it. Okay, so right now it's saying to download this hour and a half show at the basic quality settings would be 664 megabytes. And I have 31 gigs free. So I have plenty of room to download it. And if I say download with these options or if I want a higher quality version, I can go to medium size. It would be 968. I can go to best quality, which is 2 gigs. That's like watching a near HD quality on the iPad, which I never do. So I usually always opt for basic, and I would say download that show, and it would download it as fast as my current internet connection would allow. Now, if I don't want to download it, I also have the option of watch now on iPad. That means stream it from home to my iPad right now. So it's like having my DVR with me everywhere I go. Anything that's recorded, play it right now without even having to download it. Now, what you're going to want for that is a fast connection because it's got to be fast enough to be able to stream it. So I wouldn't recommend it in a hotel. I don't recommend it in Mac Group. I wouldn't recommend it anywhere where it's going to be a Starbucks where it's going to be slow. 
But if you're on a faster connection, you're at work, you're somewhere else where you could stream it with good speed, you can watch it right here and right now. So if I go back to what's on the iPad, for example, and I want to see the season finale of Scandal, and I say watch on iPad right now, on ABC. it's going to bring it up. It's, it's already playing. It's just this latency between the devices here. And while we're waiting for it to come up on the computer, that show is playing right now. I just don't have the sound turned up. But I'm watching that show because it's on the iPad right here. Now, they've got some cool things in here. They've got, oops, i got a lot of fingerprints on here. They've got a lot of gestures on here. Like, for example, 30-second skip is just swipe to the right. Does a 30-second skip. So if I want to skip through a commercial, just swipe. If I want to go back 30 seconds, go back the other way. So just cool little things that they've done inside their app. Um, so that's my option for taking my shows with me. That's my best option. Well, the hard drive has four terabytes. So hundreds. Oh, at once. Four. Four at a time on this particular DVR. Uh, the, their lowest model will do two, and I don't know if they have one that does three, so it's either two or four. Yeah. Oh, okay. The Romeos, that's right. I'm not looking at Romeos. So Romeos can do up to six, which I can't imagine six things being on at the exact same time that I want to watch, but okay. Because I don't even have four. Do they allow the connection to an external? Do they allow the connection to... Oh, yeah. Do TiVos allow the connection to an external hard drive? The answer is yes. You can plug in an eSATA or USB in the case of the newer ones hard drive, but it has to be a special one format, blah, 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 in order for it to work. But yes, you can add external storage onto it. Um, yeah, they've been selling those for a while. Question was, can I take the drive and connect it to my computer and pull off the movies? Not directly, but a little known secret is that, remember the DVD burning software Toast? Are they in TiVo format? Yes, these are in TiVo format. That's why I'm bringing that up. <laughs> okay, so remember the DVD burning software Toast, right? Well, Toast partnered with TiVo a long time ago, and they have a direct player that will let you play it, or I'm sorry, download it on your computer and play it directly from your TiVo DVR. So you can get the shows onto your computer, you just can't stream to your computer or watch it live on your computer, I should say. But you can get the shows there, you can burn them to a DVD or do whatever you want with Toast. So Toast will let you do that. All right. Um, any other questions on TiVo before I move on? Because so in addition to that, there's a Windows app that's free. You don't have to buy Toast or anything. So if you're running Parallels or something like that, you can transfer the stuff for free by downloading the free version. You you made that clear. Okay, it's free. It just ticked me off that you have to buy Toast to get the basically the same app. Got it. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, question was, do you need that extra box, the stream that I talked about, to do what I, all I'm talking about? Yes, unless you have a Romeo, because the Romeo has this feature built in. But if you have a Premiere and you want to do all the stuff on the iPad, as far as downloading shows and streaming them live, you need this box. Connected to your network. Now, the irony of it is, when I first got, when I first looked at this box, I thought this was something that plugged into the back of the TiVo. It doesn't. It plugs into your network. It doesn't matter. It doesn't even have to be anywhere near your TV. It's, it sees your TiVo over the network and then does everything from that. But it doesn't physically have to take up anything on the back of your TV or TiVo. All right. So that is I'm sorry, so, so TiVo. Romeo, you know, the TiVo working concert. Romeo is TiVo. Romeo is another model of TiVo. Right. 129 is a one-time charge? This 129 is a one-time charge. Never would. Well, TiVo is a 
TiVo's service is still a monthly or yearly fee or unless pay. You unless you unless you pay for the lifetime, right? Which I'll never do again. Because lifetime is not long enough. Lifetime means lifetime of the device? Correct. That's what I mean. So I'll never do the lifetime service again. There's a monthly charge for TiVo. It's, uh, it can be as low as six bucks. It averages nine, ten bucks, depending on how many you have. But if you have multiple ones, it goes down to six. Six something. All right, uh, so that's TiVo. That's one of my solutions. The next solution. Yes, you do. You need a cable card from Comcast. Where does it go? In the TiVo. In the TiVo. And they install it. They will not give it to you for whatever reason over the counter, even though it's literally just plug it in and read some numbers off the screen. But they have, huh? They will give it to you now. I'm okay. Last oh. year, La I got two cards and just drove to the Comcast place, and they finally. All right. Slingbox. Next solution. So Slingbox is a. Physical, one time, buy it once, you're done, no monthly service. It is a box that connects up to the back of whatever. Meaning when I say whatever, cable box, satellite box, DVD player, Blu-ray player, Apple TV, whatever you want to connect up to it and watch remotely. So if you want to watch your cable box remotely, plug it into the back of it. You want to watch your DVR remotely, plug it into the back of it. You want to watch an Apple TV remotely, plug it into the back of it. Whatever you want to watch remotely, plug into the back of it. Once you've plugged in whatever that source is, you can, you can then do this from either your computer, a TiVo-enabled box such as the, um, what's that other box that competes with Apple TV? Roku. 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 They, they have Slingbox built in now. Or iPad, iPhone apps, for example. So if I go to watch, Depending on how many people are running uh, Crash Plan right now. <laughs> okay. And I hit continue as Chuck just told me I have to get through all their marketing first. So over the internet, it's looking at my account, going and finding my box that's connected up to my TiVo. And in a few seconds, it should start a live stream. Now, that's what's on TV right now on whatever station I let that it's on right now. So that this is a live stream. This is what's happening on that box. As we speak. From the swing box connected to my home TV. So this is my TiVo. So if I bring up the remote control, guess what? It's a TiVo remote control. If I say go to the TiVo Center, goes to the TiVo Center, and shows me any of my shows. If I hit select, so I'm basically remote controlling that box as if I were at home sitting in front of it right now. Whatever comes up, if I then want to watch it, I press play and I'm watching. So. This option obviously has some advantages and disadvantages. Advantage number one, I can do it on my computer. So if I'm on my laptop, got a nice big 15 inch screen, I can watch those full screen if I want. Disadvantage, it needs an internet connection to be able to watch shows because you are streaming. It's not downloading anything. Slingbox doesn't download anything ever, it's always a stream. Just looking at her. In this kind of state, what on earth? It will auto degrade uh, if your bandwidth is not great. Auto degrade, meaning the, the quality will get worse up, if your bandwidth down is slow. Now, here's the other problem, the the problem though. The animals, this is fine and good works. as long as no one else is and wanting to watch that TV at home. Because I just switch to a show and hit play. If someone was watching TV, all of a sudden they're now watching this show at my house. But the lion cub's fate remains a mystery. Next. If they go up and change it, now I'm watching what they change it to. <laughs> well then, of course, that's what I'm saying. But if you have one box, one TV, that you're controlling that one box and that one TV. 
Now the TV doesn't have to be on. I don't want you to think that. The TV is right now in my place is actually off, which is why I'm getting this loop to remind us. But the TV is off right now, and I'm controlling that box. But if someone were to turn the TV on right now, they're watching Big Cat Diet. And if they change the channel, change the show, pause it, whatever, then I'm having to pause it, whatever. It's I just to, such a relief to see Solo again. I can change the channel. Still looking a little bit sore, but Solo looks fine. Yeah, but that's a that's more of a flake with my setup. That is because this of the way the my stuff started off. Normally, you would not see that. Because it's the way my setup is the the Normally, the it would be the white And what she's doing is just to warn every other the pride. Okay. This is something small. This is something precious. Don't start playing with it just yet. But the little cub's confused. Is thinking, hey, suddenly I've got big brothers and sisters. Moment in a pride's development. It sounds like your one of your ports could be that port that it needs could be getting blocked for whatever reason. That's what it sounds like, but it could be any number of things. All of a sudden, it could be any number of things. That's the problem. Today, that would have been the same question in New York. Does the lights, does the light up, sir? That still sounds like an internet port to me. Yeah, whistle clearly gone, no goal. Across the goal line, the whistle went there for no goal. Just get it right, right at him, Doc. They got it right. That's it. Don't know. I don't know why all of a sudden you wouldn't be able to watch it. Blues win the faceoff. Hand it on back to Shattenkirk again. 122 to go. Power play game tied at one. Okay. Sabonka, Shattenkirk. It is plugged into my the front of the net, and now he steps in front of So, um, that was a source from the TV. So, let's take it mobile now. Again, I should say. Anything can be plugged into it. Cable box, satellite box, sat your whatever. Apple TV, DVD player, whatever you want to watch remotely. Yeah, it pauses. So that is not TiVo specific. That is anything you plug into it. So you want to use your Motorola DVR? Use your Motorola DVR. Okay, so Slingbox also has... their own app sorry about the fingerprints but anyway their app basically lets me bring up live TV Connecting. You're being awesome. I am. Connected. Starting. All right. So this is the same thing we just saw. Uh, same game, but streaming to the iPad in the Slingbox app. Okay, so just pointing out that they have an app that's um, iPhone. They have one for iPhone and iPad. Now, um, as Jack was complaining about TiVo not having a free Mac solution for downloading shows, my biggest complaint about Slingbox is when they find, when they did come out with their mobile apps. Not only were they outrageously expensive, because remember you already bought their hardware. They charged originally thirty dollars for the app, which is steep for an app. And you had to buy it again when the iPad version came out. Another thirty dollars. Now they're fifteen, but still, they sell them. You know, they were selling them separately for all platforms. If you had a Windows phone, Android, whatever, thirty bucks a pop for each device. And to me, that was just 
robbery. That may be the case today. Okay. Yeah. Do you do you have the iPad version or you have the iPhone version on your iPad? I had the iPad. I must know because I had the iPad before I had the iPhone. Okay. All right. So that is basically the ways I watch my shows. Now, if I just want to watch stuff, other stuff then there is a variety of ways to do that. For example, most of the major networks now have their own apps. So here's the ABC app, for example. ABC has their own app that lets you watch ABC content, but here's the catch-22 with most of the network apps. Commercials and you need to be subscribing. Meaning, I can't just be a non-cable satellite subscriber, download that app and start watching TV shows. I can watch some content as a non-subscriber with commercials, and then other content, like if I want to watch my favorite ABC show, whatever that would be, I go to play it, it's going to say sign in. Meaning sign in with your Comcast, your AT&T, your DirecTV, whatever your network provider is, sign in with those credentials, and then... Uh, ABC is unlocked, and you can watch those shows. Same thing with HBO, which HBO is paid anyway, so it's no shock there that HBO wants you to be a paid user to watch their shows. But if I want to watch Boardwalk Empire right now, which I can, I have to be signed in to Comcast, which in the upper right corner you see the Xfinity logo, because I'm signed in with my Comcast credentials to be able to watch these shows. <coughs> So if I want to play this, no problem. I can play it. You say Comcast credentials, you get that password. Yeah, your Comcast login, like you want, the one you used to manage your account. So it's nothing special. It's my regular Comcast ID, but it's that username and password that I would sign in with this app to be able to watch HBO. In other words, they want to make sure I'm paying for HBO. The thing I don't get I get that. The thing I don't get is that why wouldn't you just want to sell me a subscription to be able to watch stuff on this? Maybe at five bucks a month or whatever. Because they're afraid of pissing off Comcast. Okay. All right. They need to. Okay, so that's uh, Boardwalk Empire playing back on my iPad, streaming, obviously. HBO allows no downloads whatsoever. So it is watch it, you know, streaming over an internet connection. But it is streaming from HBO, nothing to do with my home setup. <laughs> All right, so that's HBO, any of the HBO, or most of the HBO shows, I should say, not any. Uh, movies. Now, speaking of Comcast, Comcast has a variety of apps. They have a remote control app, they have a TV Go app, and they have a AnyPlay app. And I always forget which one's which. I think this is the one I want. And if I go to TV series, I was stunned by the amount of content you get in the Xfinity app. If you're a Comcast subscriber, you already have access to all this. Just log in with your same Comcast credentials. And you can watch just about anything on demand. So I was at a user group meeting a few months back, and we were talking about TV shows at the Afterglow, and I believe it was... Sheeta that turned me on to Dexter. I had never watched Dexter before. I know, right? I never watched Dexter before. And so I searched for Dexter, which you have to be a Showtime subscriber, obviously. So I subscribed to Showtime long enough to get caught up on Dexter. Now, Showtime and other networks, some allow downloads, some don't. So I was actually able to download these and watch them offline. I don't know if that's showing up. But anyway, that's a download button, the white one. So I was able to take a few of these with me on the plane and watch them without having to do the live stream. Or I could watch them live stream. So, various ways to enjoy stuff. My other, and I'll leave it on this because we're out of time, my last favorite way is Netflix. Netflix is Netflix. It's the same Netflix you've had for years. 
Of course, they've moved away so much from DVD rental as they have moved more towards streaming. So with the Netflix app, uh, once you're logged in with your Netflix account, you have access to your Netflix you know, shows, content. The thing I like about it is since you're logged into the same account, it remembers where you left off and who was watching. So I have accounts set up for my daughters as well as myself, even though they log on to mine sometimes because it shows recently the shows that are for kids, and I'm like, I didn't watch that. <laughs> but anyway, I... I Went back because I was bored and started rewatching Lost. So I'm up to season, I'm up to the last season now, episode two. And um, it's funny how much you miss the first time you watch anything. It's like I'm seeing stuff that I, A, don't remember, and B, missed the first time. So I, I did the same thing with 24. Went, went through Netflix and watched all seasons of 24 because it's coming up again. It's starting in a couple weeks. Um, questions on watching TV? Can you add Amazon Prime? Oh, yeah. Amazon Prime has an app as well. Yep, you can do Amazon Prime on here. Is there a way of, uh, there's a lot of internet, um, apps now that you can get like programs and like storm chasers and stuff. If I want to watch it on my TV on the big screen from the iPad, how would I do that? Okay. All right, so the question was, if I want to watch stuff from my iPad on the TV, in other words, I want to do the opposite, how would I do that? Do you have an Apple TV? Yes. All right, if you have an Apple TV, um, here we'll go back to this again, let's see. So we're going to pretend my computer is the Apple TV because it is running AirPlay. So here, let me go back and do it, show you. So, on the bottom of your iOS device, when you flick up, provided you're running iOS 7, there's an AirPlay control. As long as your iPad and your Apple TV are on the same Wi-Fi network, you'll see AirPlay, and you'll see that Apple TV listed there. And then you would just say, go to it and mirror it. And just like on my computer now, it's coming up. And here's the problem, though. A lot of times with these apps, you're going to get this. What does it say? Cannot play video. Cannot play video. This, this, uh, the connected display is not supported. HBO does this. Um, what's the other one that does this? No, I just, a minute ago, it was still there. A couple of these apps are, yeah. Um, Showtime does it where... Showtime definitely does it, because I wanted to do it with Dexter, right. Where they block AirPlay from working. Because for whatever, again, licensing, crazy, paranoid restrictions, they think you might broadcast it for a room of 100 people, and they won't get their money. But you can put, like, YouTube and all that stuff. YouTube, yeah. Anything that works with AirPlay will work the way I just showed you, but some apps won't. Let's see if HBO's turn theirs off. Because I know they were talking about turning it off, but I think when I checked this morning, it was still on. <sighs> Correct. It has HBO on, on it now anyway. That might have been why they turned it off. <laughs> okay, so HBO looks like they did turn theirs off. Right. To block it. Right. So when it works, it's great. But when it doesn't work, it will give you the AirPlay message or cannot work or cannot stream on this device message. So it's app by app. Some will work, some won't. Is, is there a way to like, cut the cable completely? In other words, is there a way to have Comcast or DirecTV? Okay, question was, is there a way to cut a monthly subscription period? Like, I don't want to pay Comcast, DirecTV, or any of these places. Yes and no. The yes part of it is, depends on... Your, Depends on what you want to watch. Not that I know. Okay. So, I, it, that's, that's why I said it depends on what you want to watch. The only other way I know to, like, not be locked into a monthly cable subscription bill 
is good old iTunes. Depending on what you want to watch, the iTunes store has TV shows that you can pay for once and download. Show by show, episode by episode. And sometimes they have sporting games on here too. So if I don't want to pay a monthly fee, but I do want to watch that last week's episode of blah, 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 I can go here, pay two bucks for it and watch it. And that's it. I'm done. I own that show. I can watch as many times as I want. And I don't have to, I didn't have to pay anybody monthly. I didn't have to subscribe to anything to do it. So it just depends on what you want to watch. Yeah, again, that gets back to the Elgato solution. Whenever that comes out for your iPad or whatever, you'll be able to watch that over-the-air broadcast. But um, over-the-air is relative <laughs> to where you are. But yeah, local stations. Pardon? Oh, Ariel. Don't know. I don't know. I never use it. Can you download via BitTorrent TV shows? I don't know. I never use it. Okay, that's all we got time for. I hope you got something out of being able to enjoy TV shows on the go. And especially out of Crash Plan, which it looks like Baha's still here.